Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Another Road to the Triple Crown video. Scott Shapiro, Darren Zocalli joining you, heading to a place that's a stone's throw from where I am right now, Ozone Park, New York Aqueduct Racetrack, the winter home, of course, to New York Racing. We're talking about the Gotham Stakes. It's the last of 10 on the program. Scott, the Gotham has been around for a long time. You look back at its history, some monstrous names have won this race, including the likes of Native Dancer and Secretariat, to say just a couple. Uh, it hasn't been the breeding ground of Derby winners that it once was, but still always a competitive race. And I think there's some talent in the field this year. Yeah, easy goer, another one of the all-time greats to have won this race, Darren. Definitely not what it used to be for a number of different reasons. It is a one-turn race where most of these races are at two turns. But I think it's good for horses looking to maybe – that got maybe a little bit of a late start or, you know, the question is still there whether they're two turns or one turn. This one-turn mile may separate them a little bit. Uh, last year, won by $95.50 winner Wayburn. So uh, I don't know if we're going to get that kind of upset in here, but I thought the pace looked extremely contentious, Darren. I wanted to take a look at a couple horses that I thought were, you know, maybe were the most talented in the field and weren't going to be the favorite. But in the end, it just looks like they're all going to battle early. Well, I was going to say there's certainly no shortage of early speed in this field. There is some quality sprint speed moving up to a mile here. Dean's list could certainly be the speed of the speed. You have horses like Rockefeller on the outside, Morello, you know, they're going to be forwardly placed. How did you see this pace scenario unfolding? Who do you think gets to the front? I think Dean's list looks like the speed of the speed, although there are horses drawn to his inside that may have to be overly aggressive because I don't know if they're going to want to sit behind Dean's list. So that's part of the puzzle here. If Dean's list was on the inside more, not in the middle of the uh, draw, I think it might slow things down a tiny bit. But yeah, he looks like the speed of the speed. The son of Spitestown has been very impressive in both of his wins, showed some grit in getting the job done last time out in his first start against winners. He's now two for two. You know, you look at the pedigree a little bit, and I think it looks pretty sprinty overall, but there is some uh, route, you know, pedigree on the bottom side there. So I think Dean's List is a talented animal, but he's going to have to deal with a lot of rivals to his inside and outside. I think we both ended up landing on horses that we think will be able to take advantage. You were a little more creative than I was in terms of the morning line, though. Well, yeah, the morning line came out, and I think David Aragon have made it pretty obvious the way he set the line that there's a lot of contenders in this field. Morello is the three to one morning line favorite. I know this is a horse that you like quite a bit. I like him a lot too. Second race back off the layoff. He certainly has a pedigree that says the stretching out to a mile is going to be no problem. And he has certainly looked ultra impressive in his two starts so far. Yeah, you know, you're trying to beat favorites, uh, you know, most of the time or as much as you possibly can in horse racing. But sometimes things just set up well for the uh, likely public choice. And I think that's the case for Morello here. We mentioned a lot of early speed. This horse has done nothing wrong, has rattled off two impressive wins by open lengths, including a 94 Brisnet speed rating last time out in the wing field. Should get an absolutely favorable setup here. And he does have tactical speed. He can kind of put himself wherever Jose Lescano wants him to. So I think he's the best horse in the race and should get the right setup. So he looks tough to beat to me. He is going to be tough. And as you said, that post draw is going to help him, puts him in a prime stalking position. The only question with the horse that was outside is what kind of pressure he gets from Rockefeller, who ran second behind Newgrange. What do we make of that real quick? Newgrange went down to Arkansas, won the Southwest, but then disappointed in the Rebel. How do you gauge Rockefeller based on Newgrange's two most recent efforts? Yeah, it's tough to be overly excited because of the way Newgrange ran. And I don't love the way, as we talked about it last week, I didn't even like the way Newgrange ran that much when he won the Southwest. Rockefeller is stalked off the pace in both of his defeats. He's two for four of stable mates that ended up going wire to wire. So I don't know if that's, you know, kind of circumstantial, the fact that he's not going to press his stable mates or not, but he just doesn't look like the kind of horse that wants to pass. He could get a really good trip if he wants to relax under Trevor McCarthy on the uh, ship in from Southern California. But for me, I'm going to pass on uh, Rockefeller. Let him prove it to me that he wants to sit off and pass horses in the lane. I'm taking a similar approach. You said that I was getting a bit more creative with my selection, and it is certainly creative with number uh, with number two glider here. Glider going out from Mark Cassie. This is a son of quality road. Glider's coming out of a race where he ran second to a horse by the name of Emmanuel, who might actually be favored in the Fountain of Youth Stakes with the scratch of Mo Donegal on Saturday. He's going to be close to favored, I feel. Uh, ran a very good second. He's getting away from an awfully good horse. I know he's stepping up in class, but after watching all these races and studying these horses, I think Emmanuel could be better than anything that he's facing in this particular field. And I think that might actually move Glider up. And he's certainly run fast enough to be a contender already. 
Yeah, no, I like to pick a lot. I could definitely see a cold exact there or even using both of them in a horizontal type and env- wagering type environment. They went slow in that race at Tampa. And, and you make a great point in terms of class. You know, on paper, this is a step up, but I'm not sure it really is. And he made a move there to kind of try to attack Emmanuel, who was loose on the lead, a very talented horse, and uh, got turned away, but now cuts back to one turn. He should get an absolutely dream trip under Antonio Gallardo. I like the selection a lot. Not sure if you'll get eight to one, but uh, you're going to get a better price than my top pick, Morello. Yeah, we'll try to go value shopping. We'll get every uh, every bit of it that we can, hopefully. Glider, myself, uh, Morello for Scott Shapiro. It's an interesting Gotham with uh, probably one of the more talented runnings that I've seen in the last few years. So looking forward to it. And remember, you can look forward to these derby preps all season long. Follow us with the road to the Kentucky Derby leaderboard. Make those win bets. Cash some tickets. Earn points as long as your horse earns points. And climb that leaderboard all the way to the first Saturday in May. Scott Shapiro, Darren Zocali, we will be with you all season long. Best of luck in the Gotham, and don't forget to watch and wager at Twin Spires.